We're some of the people that make minutes with. This is a hundredth episode of the series and we wanted to do something a little bit different. We wanted to take the opportunity to go back into some of our favourite moments from across the series as a whole and also respond to some of the frequently asked questions from you, the viewers. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, it's because of you that we can continue to make this series. And for anyone that's slightly disappointed, hoping it was interesting people speaking <laughs> this week, don't worry, there'll be a regular episode dropping on Sunday at 4pm UK time, as usual. Right, so this is probably uh, the most received question that we get uh, across any platform, but what's your favourite episode? Um, I'll start, I don't mind. My, my favourite episode is uh, Sweet Anita, the uh, woman with Tourette's syndrome. Brilliant, she was so articulate and told her story so, so well. And we brought her back to another video, but did really well as well. So I think she told my favourite because she was emotional and also kind of funny and entertaining and a good episode to watch. A lot of people who have Tourette's tend to report that they have fewer tics or none during sex. But the thing about that is, that's because it engages your focus. So that only applies to good sex, um, which is really f***ing brutal because I've never hurt a guy's ego more than simply going during an intimate moment. I think when that video went out on YouTube, actually, it was our fastest video ever to hit a million. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Um, I loved the uh, crime scene cleaner. Um, I think I saw it before. You I... love gross things. You love gross things. Thanks, you don't. <laughs> um, no, I saw it before I even joined, and I was. I just thought it was an amazing topic, and I've never heard about it. I really loved it, and um, and then I came here to work and worked on the series. I probably cleaned up close to three or four hundred different scenes where people have disemboweled themselves, put a knife in their stomach, and and kept themselves open while they're alive. Even one gentleman. Uh, decided to take some scissors and cut his intestines while he'd done it and throw them in the bath. I thought I was going to be sick on that one. That really? Yeah, that behind the camera, yeah. He was getting into the details. I was like, I can handle this. <laughs> and halfway through it, I just felt really lightheaded. <laughs> yeah. And I've never had that behind camera before, but I just don't, you can't like stop a guy it's, mid flow and just go, I'm going to go be sick from one, what you've said. It's one of the great like joys of the show is like being behind, being behind the cameras and then turning around and seeing Jim or someone there just going, and pulling your face yeah. is like it gives, reacting live to I the I think thing. that was one of the few episodes we cut quite a few bits out because we just... Too like, gross. Too gross. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was one of the ones we worried about on Facebook, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah. How we, I can't remember. We had happened. to just cut around it, basically. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's describing it, isn't it? So it's like technically okay, but um, yeah, it wasn't too gross visually, was it? No. no. no thankfully. I thought the, from the ones which... From the people I've interviewed, um, I really liked Ruby, which was the forced marriage episode. I yeah. think she was brilliant. She was an amazing speaker. Mm -hmm. She was her story was just it was shocking, but what was and like it really touched me. But what was interesting that you remember Jim, she was telling us, "Oh guys, I'm sorry, you have to listen to this. Like, are you okay?" She was asking us while she's telling Freshly. us this story about mm. like like the like abuse she went through, and it was just. Yeah, yeah, she's apologising to us. Yeah, 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 yeah. And she was like, she was so cheerful and laughing, though she went through some terrible things. And it was a very long interview, but then it was an amazing episode and um, really feel proud for covering topics like that yeah. as well. I knew, I knew who was going to rape me, and that's what happened. And it, it became like every single day. And that was very tough to kind of go through. Um, he was, he looked young, he did look young, but it was after the, the marriage that I knew that he was twice my age, so I was 15, he was 30. Going through the rape every single day, like I said, I had to disconnect myself. I had to just, where I took myself, and this is very personal, it was like I took myself to the beach. In my head, I was on a beach, because that's, I grew up next to a beach. I love being by the sea, and that's my, that's my zen place. And I used to take myself there and my brain said, like, whatever's happening to my body's happening. But my brain would be elsewhere. And that's how I kept myself alive. But when after he's done, I remember going to the bathroom and just sitting under the shower for like an hour and just cleaning my, trying to clean every single part of me off. What about you, Jim? You've you probably worked on more episodes than anyone else being the DOP. Um, I think it's the, one of the first ones we ever filmed. I think it's because I was like we weren't 
um, well, not that we're de- desensitised, but mm. having worked on so many now, I feel like you can like, handle certain subjects a little bit more mm. than we could at the start. And the yeah. first one we did uh, with the guy who had uh, schizophrenia, mm. uh, oh, yeah. uh, Johnny Benjamin, um, his was like, he, he walked in and he, he looked like one of my mates. You know, it could have been mates him for years. And he sat down um, and just went through his story. And he was so raw and emotional. I'd never even heard about mm-hmm. those certain conditions for schizophrenia. And uh, I, th- I was crying. Yeah, we, we I don't know if you were. I was like, <laughs> looked at Danny as well. And it was just like, yeah, just yeah. like came out. But it, it was just the most yeah, emotional interview I think I've ever watched. I just, it was, yeah, it was a massive shock. Because, I mean, schizophrenia, everything I thought about schizophrenia was, I guess, like from the media. And that was all people with schizophrenia are dangerous and violent and um, I just, I couldn't, I really couldn't take it in for a long time, this diagnosis. In fact, it took me years t- to deal with it, to be honest, because uh, I kind of thought my life was over as soon as I got that diagnosis. George, George yeah, Margo, um, I think my favourite episode has to be how I escaped North Korea twice. I just thought the, the things that that woman went through you couldn't even make it up. Like it's yeah. on another level, isn't it? And and the fact that at the very end she gets spoiler alert, gets uh, <laughs> reunited with her son is mm, just like yeah. it's like a it's like a movie, isn't it? Yeah. If ever there was an episode, there should be a movie. It would be that one. Yes, yeah, so twelve hours I paint and then I burst my child, but I'm very really happy. It's my family. So when my child, the hundred days, is a Chinese man, really drunk. And he came to home, and he, to- he told me that he's, I wanted to sort my child. I just said, stand up, and i holding the knife. If you touch it, my son, I kill you. Um, Aaron? Um, I was also going to say Ruby, but just like I think as a female, like watching that story and listening to her and also like interacting with her mm. and everything that she's been through, um, it was really moving, like personally. And then, yeah, I think... The thing about this show is like meeting the the range of people you get to interact with on a daily basis. But Ruby like was telling the most horrific thing. But then yeah, she was like apologizing to all of us for for her story mm. and being like, "Are you guys okay?" And I just found that like super powerful. And also like coming to work at Loud Bible and seeing that how this platform is like used for like stories like this of, of like the female experience is yeah pretty special. Cancer. Mm. Well, are you Luke? Um, Come on, like you've talked to every single person we've cast. Uh, <laughs> like, um, I'd have to say um, John O'Lancaster. Mm. Um, I'd been trying to line something up with him for a while. Yeah. And um, yeah, finally, you know, the perfect series to, you know, get him on board with. My adoption report says that. Jonathan Lancaster was born on the 31st of the 10th, 1984. Both parents were horrified by the child's appearance. Both parents felt no maternal bond. Um, Both parents left the hospital 36 hours later, leaving the child behind. And um, and those words, you know, it's something that's that's obviously stuck with me. And, um, you know, when I had yeah, angrier periods in my life, but you know, I, I focused on those words a lot and, and they cut deep. Amazing story, a uh, really inspirational guy. Um, and yeah, literally when, um, <clears throat> when I called him and offered him the, you know, the opportunity to come on and talk about his experiences, um, he didn't hesitate in getting on board uh, because the sort of, the man he is, uh, he wants to sort of put a positive message out there, and yeah. um, it was great to give him, you know, our platform to do so. Mm. Um, I think mine, in the end, might be the sniper episode we did. When you meet him, he's such an amazing person, and you watch him and you think he's this massive, tough guy. And you're sort of growing up, you look at people like that and think that's what I want to look like, basically. Mm. And then he can talk you through why he's ended up with his condition. And it was amazing to put that video out and see people, the viewers go on that journey and you'd be worried about comments being unkind or about like, oh, if you can't handle it, don't go in the army or things like that. But they weren't really, because because of the way he told the story and because of who he was as a person, you sort of saw that they, I don't know, they bought into the fact that it's a condition that 
clearly can happen yeah. to anybody. I think there was a massive positive response from them, and he was really pleased with the piece, and we brought him back a couple yeah, of times. Yeah, we, we got a charity thing for him, didn't we? And the audience raised yeah. £10,000, I think it was, for yeah. his um, survival school. You know, we was using the machine guns on both sides, because as soon as they hear a sniper shot, they all run off. So I told the machine guns to start firing, uh, the gym piece to start firing, and it masks our shots. And they came from north, they came from the south, they came from the east, they came from the west, they came from everywhere. And um, we got absolutely, I'm going to say it, we got absolutely f***ing smashed. We thought we were going to get overrun. So I phoned Tanya. I get a bit upset, you know, sorry. Um, I phoned her and she answered. And, um, and I said to her, I love you, you know. And she goes, oh, no. She goes, what's all that noise? And I said, that's nothing, that's nothing. I said, I'll phone you in the morning. I promise you I'll phone you in the morning. Just want to hear her voice, you know. Just want to hear her voice. But, like, he's a good example because we cast him because he was telling really interesting things about sniping, like, in terms of, like, things like the fact that you've got to be with a partner and wipe their bum, which is yeah. such a silly little thing to say. But then he was, that was the kind of easy way to get people in. And then you, but you actually have this really deep, dark, like PTSD story underneath it all, which is, which kind of holds it all together and makes it really special. Mm, mm. The, the, the other one I'll say that I was just thought was an unbelievable story was the um, terrorist turned spy, which was more in the kind of North oh, Korean yeah. thing. It's just kind of one of those titles that you think, oh, imagine we got something like that. And, I think you talked to him and he yeah, was no, flying... called him in really late. But he was flying like two hours after the shoot, yeah, wasn't it all, he? It, it was just like, worked perfect. Yeah, it yeah. just clicked into place and he came in, did the whole thing, one takes, brilliant. It was intense. It was, like, it was an intense 45 minutes to fit all that into 45 minute interview. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one thing you should know about espionage, as well as bomb making, the first mistake is your last mistake. You're not going to live to make another mistake. And therefore, you have to be absolutely careful. You know, one wrong word you know, and you are a head shorter and six feet under. Let's move on to the next question. Uh, which episode affected you the most? I was editing and I wasn't interviewing you. Did you interview uh, Child Sacrifice? I did, yeah. The, the woman, Child Sacrifice yeah, yeah, activist. Yeah. So um, her story was incredible. I, I, was ed I was only editing it, but I, I cried over it many times. And uh, I was just moved by her. I was yeah. just moved by the story. I was, it, it, it was unbelievable. Like the, 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 everything about it, the fact that this happens and I didn't know about that. The fact that there are women who just go there and just sacrifice their life to do that. Um, it was, yeah, it was, it was, it was something. Uh, there was a witch doctor who had laid this child down, um, put herbs all around her body, and was about to cut her um, before um, the security guard found her and rescued her and brought her to this um, baby's home where I was working. I think like that's the thing is like it's a real privilege doing this because like it's people sharing with you like often the worst mm. moment of their life, which yeah. is like really tough for them to do and like they're reliving an experience but they want to do it because they've got a message at the end of it usually. What steps affected you the most, Ben? Um, well, I, to be honest, um, not as, the one that affected me most in how I, in, it would probably be Kev's, the guy with terminal cancer from the first series. Oh well, yeah. And that took about two months before the fateful day when I sat in front of a urologist at a hospital and they looked at me and said, I'm sorry, but you might probably only live two years. You know, he said, don't think 10. If you're lucky, you might live three to four. So the reason for that is he had prostate cancer. And I think like the thing that really struck me is it's quite an embarrassing illness. Like it's the sort of thing that men don't really want to talk about and think about. And um, he was describing the symptoms of it. And one of those was getting up during the night loads to have a pee and that's what I do. <laughs> so I basically went to the doctor after that and got a checkup, and you know, it was all fine. Um, but the, the reason it affected me is because what he said is, I should have got a checkup earlier. Something, I knew something was wrong. I had these symptoms. I should have got a checkup earlier. And if I had, it could have been different. Mm. And it made me think about health and it made me think about the things you're embarrassed to talk about and the things that you don't want to. But the fact that really, if there is something going on, you should confront it straight away. 
Um, they do a big push on it at the moment. I've heard adverts on the on the radio, any male yeah. over 50, go and get it checked out and all that kind of thing. But it just made me think about like, if something, don't ignore stuff is basically how I thought about it. What about you, George? Uh, the episode that affected me the most. I think the good thing about Minutes With, and you probably all agree, is that they kind of make you grateful for the situation that you've yeah. got. And like the episode that stood out to me the most in that regard was probably the one with Themba, the guy who stowed away mm. on the plane from oh, yeah. South Africa. Mm. The plane is just left without any problem in the floor, like secured to come and stop the plane or maybe to be been spot, maybe climbing over to the plane. No, nothing did happen. When I'm in there, I can see some houses. I can see some cars down there. Because when it goes up, you have to go like this. So when it goes up, it gives you a big view. You can see. You can see all the places down there. I remember just there all the time, Carlito said to me, we made it. I said to him, yes, after that, passed out with oxygen. He's trying to escape a life in South Africa that is awful. And the lens that he would go through to escape such a life is just, you wouldn't even think about it yourself. Yeah. Um, and that obviously, you know, just makes you grateful for the, you have a bad day at work, you think, you know, it can never be that bad. Yeah. Um, and then the second half of it, the fact that just a random stranger obviously went up to him and is now helping him. And I think at the end of the episode, he ends up getting him accommodation to live in. And he's got all these new things. Yeah. He was went from living on the street to having his own house just because of the kindness of a random person on the street. Um, yeah, I thought that was just like a nice reminder that people aren't always the worst. <laughs> it's like a perfect lab Bible story, like, a, like an everyday hero helping out someone yeah. who's in need. It's like just so lab Bible as a yeah. thing. Well, I want the God to look after after this guy as well because this guy is decent. And he's, he's, he, he do it from his, to his heart, you know? He do it from his heart. You can see, the guys like this one, they need to be trusted from the eyes of their God because they do it with, with their heart. They don't do it with the uh, dodgy, you know? They don't play the dodgy thing. <laughs> yeah, they don't play the dodgy <laughs> thing, man. Um, Aaron, what about you? Come on, what's, what's your, uh, the one that's impacted you the most? Um, I think meeting Alex Lewis. I think that episode. Oh, yeah. um, because it's that thing about like someone coming in with just like, an unbelievable life story and a, and a tragic set of circumstances and the way they like carry themselves and present themselves and have like turned their tragedy into a really like positive situation. Um, I think I felt very like moved by meeting him and hearing his story. Making affordable wheelchairs for um, Ethiopians with various disabilities, predominantly through polio, but a lot through war all of this work is going to help tons of people. You know, the, the prosthetics have already helped. I think we raised 700,000 pounds at the back end of, the, sorry, the start of last year. So every child in the UK under 10 with limb difference gets a free arm. For everything that's been put into me, the millions of pounds in healthcare, the constant healthcare, the least I can do is to continue working and trying to make it better for others. So really, my, my, my working life, my career started about eight years ago. It wasn't when I was 33, certainly not. I didn't do enough with my, my education, the life that I had. I didn't make the most of it. And I regret that massively. Well, the um, best, best talker, best, most articulate, uh, oh. best talk we've had on. Got to be Jamie. Jamie. Oh, Jimmy Hall? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've got to, I've got to hold on. I've got to get a grip here, and I've got to do exactly that. So, I kept my left hand on the uh, the flight control stick, and my right hand on the throttle, and I carefully just knocked off that power on the throttle to try to reduce airspeed. And I needed to reduce that significantly in order to get myself to a, a relatively safe speed approaching the active runway. All the time, I'm watching the altimeter spin down. So through 900 feet, 800 feet. 700 feet, 600 feet, and I've got that left hand on control, right hand on the throttle. <sighs> and I'm trying to breathe and I'm trying to think through it. And I'm just trying to really calm it all down as much as possible. Uh, yeah, he was really good. I, I, th I think Sweet Anita. I think Sweet Anita in terms of like, um, she was really good at conveying something very, very complex in a very simple way to the audience. Um, I think she did so much for the threats in that video. Mm.
Not, not David McMillan. David, oh, Mac David oh, McMillan he, oh, is God. my favorite. Can't forget about His him. voice is just, I wish he narrated my life in my head. And he was just, like a walking yeah. podcast. Yeah, yeah he's amazing. He like he's, uh, I think that's actually, I don't know if it's interesting for anyone, but um, with his interview, I, I just found it so interesting that I, I made to cut it into two episodes. Yeah. And I think they've done really well. They both, I think, close to a million, maybe over a million already. He's, he was great. And he's just story, like, you just sit down, just listen to it, and it's amazing. Even as it was, I had to persuade him to be quiet on the night. I had to be quite cruel to him in a way, to frighten him. Because when he started moaning a bit loudly, at the grief of being caught with people escaping, I had to lean down next to him, and I got close to his ear. I said, Mirage, believe me, when I tell you the only reason, the only reason I don't kill you immediately is that it would upset my friends in the cell. But it won't upset me and I will if you make another sound. Remember the, do you remember the weirdest title we did? Anyone remember the titles we rejected? One that we almost did. I can't remember, just thinking back to like... It's Bionic Penis. Oh, Bionic, <gasps> we did the Bionic Penis. Bionic yeah. Penis. Yeah. It sounds like it's going to be like a, this Terminator. Robocop Terminator penis. Yeah. Um, That's not. <laughs> but it was, sort of a, it was a blow up penis, really, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Sort of and also, know. it's not. He was lovely. Yes. yes. If anything, it's an educational piece. Yeah. yeah. But it, but it does. You, there's no way you could package it without it seeming like you're trying to be clickbaity. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He obviously looked at my arm and said to me, "We can make you about this size uh, penis." I was like, "Whatever." I could have said to him, "I want a ten inch one." You know what I mean? And I guess that's what you got to do on Facebook a little bit more, not be clickbaity, but. You've got to try and draw people in because they're just scrolling down their timeline on the phone and you've got to grab their attention immediately. So yeah. a phrase like bionic penis is obviously going to do that. Uh, whereas on YouTube, you know, I think people now, they wait for the episodes to come out and mm. they know what to expect. Whereas on Facebook, you've got to grab people's attention a bit more. Mm -hmm. So that's why doing the clips with the titles at the top um, and sort of picking out the right keywords was a big step for us in that. Yeah. Okay, next question. Uh, next. Have should have a thought of Andrew. Were you laughing at me stumbling over my words? Next question. Yeah. Yeah. Next question. <laughs> Sounds like you. Next Sounds question. Sounds like me. <laughs> um, <laughs> right. Uh, next question. Which episode has received the most views? Oh, Luke can take this one there. Yeah, right? go on, Luke. Um, I was looking the other day. It is Plane Crash Survivor, is it not? It's Jono. John, John. No, well, it depends Wait, on how are you talking though? Where are we talking on YouTube? It depends oh, okay. on the platform. I think on yeah. YouTube the, the biggest is Craig, the sniper. Yes. I think it's close between Craig right, and, and, and showing myself up here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean Luke, Luke starts every morning with, with, with checking the numbers anyway, yeah, yeah. Before, he, before he has coffee. So. <laughs> yes, it's no, yours is second because I think on YouTube it's Craig and then it's Plane Crash and it's Peter Fall Hunter, isn't it, Mike? Yeah, um, there are three, three big hitters. Across Facebook as Sweet, well. I I'm not sure. I think John is John or not. John is massive. John is John is the biggest one on Facebook. Yeah, yeah definitely. I'm not I think sure. we put three clips, and last time I checked, I think one of those had 22 million views. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The clip that has is I was abandoned by my parents because of my face. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like that's the highest thing we've ever had viewed on minutes with. Definitely. Are there any episodes you thought deserved more views than they got? Um, yes. <laughs> a lot of them. Yeah, all, all, yeah. all of them. Uh, yeah, I would love all of them to be viewed more. Uh, no, I don't know. Um, I think from the recent ones, the Down Syndrome actor, I thought mm. deserved more views, and he actually did get more views on all other platforms except was, was it TikTok? on YouTube. Was it? On TikTok, he did big numbers. Did yeah. big numbers. He did, I think, good numbers on Facebook as well. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, that's just the first one that com comes to my head because I was really passionate about making it, and mm. I think it's really important to. So, yeah, and when I was actually when I was preparing for it, um, I found it really weird that I didn't find really any interviews on YouTube with uh, with people with Down syndrome, like sit down, like one on one interviews, and um, that was another reason to do it. Would you say that there is something you dislike about the acting world? Uh, being the lady at Bones was what hit me at most, um, because uh, I really do want to get rid of lady Bones. But um, by saying, yes, we can do things. I, I'm going to say something pretty different, which I, I'm, I'm got a ghost hunters didn't do better. <laughs> I, it was like, it was like so... Daddy, I was so serious. It was so stupid. It was not stupid. It was so silly because like we got them to do like a test of the office with the ghosts in the office. And like me, I was and, me and Jim don't believe, <laughs> we don't believe in ghosts. Like I think it's fair. Yeah, but, like, but they set it down and then when they started saying like, 
any spirits in the room? And if that thing had beat, we'd have been out of there. Like, I'd we like to. Uh, I, 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 I don't know if you could set it up to beep. Uh, I, I, we were trying to make it beep and stuff. We were trying to make it, but it, would, like, it, was, so, it was so much fun to do. And, and like, yeah. we were having good fun with it. And they were really nice people. So if there's any spirits here in this room with us now, we ask that you please approach Lorraine, come towards the doll and come and touch her. Come towards her and touch her. She'll light up and make a sound. My, uh, my episode that I thought would have performed better was from that first series as well, and it was a stuntman. So the stunt coordinator was going to fire the air ram. So it had a, a lead with the button going to him offset. When he does fire the button, I'm virtually in line with the ground. So he fires the air ram, which fires me straight onto the back of my neck. And literally, I'm lying on the floor and I can't feel my legs. And this went on for about two minutes. It's the worst feeling in the world. You know, I thought I was paralysed. I just could not feel my legs at all. I thought I'd broken my neck. He was brilliant. And he, yeah. He, yeah, Gladiator, Star Wars, yeah. Bond he'd been in. He'd been in all these brilliant he'd things. He got thrown out a like, window by Stallone. He got thrown out a window <laughs> yeah. by Stallone in Judge Dredd. Yeah. Um, um, and, I, and I was sure that just this list of films would draw people in to be like, yeah. oh, I'd be interested in that. I, it didn't do badly and it was a good episode, but uh, that was one where I really thought it'd mm. go through the roof. Yeah, and yeah. I was surprised at how it did. Do you read the comments? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Each one of them. <laughs> and I idea. make note of all the bad ones yeah. and I put them in my black book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have she will book. find you. <laughs> we have to hold Mariana back from replying. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I create different accounts yeah. of replying. <laughs> Wasn't it someone's idea in the comments for us all to do this, basically? It was, yes. Um, I'm going to post it on the screen over Danny's face here. Um, <laughs> it, 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 was, uh, it was somebody posted that they'd be interested in a kind of behind the scenes thing and like seeing the crew. I think they actually said something about Marianne. Wondering what Marianne. Yeah. Like. yeah, which I'm a bit annoyed about because I did like 50 episodes and no one asked to see what I look like. But there was a lot of comments well, about you. You yeah, know yeah, how yeah. an annoying Irishman is going to look like. I mean, just... yeah, yeah, who's that idiot in the background laughing yeah. or uh, whatever it is? I've only done a few, so I've sort of escaped the uh, <laughs> the ire. I think I did. I think I did one of the ones I did. I'm, I think there was a comment saying last week's interview was better. Wow. Well, oh, which, really? You know, well, no, there, there no. are a lot, there are a lot of comments. It was Mariana, not you. Oh. There, was lot, no, there was a lot of comments saying that I sound like, like a dude, so it... <laughs> like, sound like what? Like a dude. dude. Like a dude. dude. Yeah. <laughs> I have quite a low voice. There are also, I've seen loads of comments trying to guess where you're from. Yeah, I'm like, not uh, going to tell anyone. I think you could guess in the comment section. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. whoever guesses gets... Closest uh, to the city gets a... Gets a <laughs> Gets pinned comment. I don't know. Whatever. I genuinely think the comments are really interesting. I read them all. It's like it's that thing where the outlier. Like if there's one saying stupid stuff or like that they hate this person or whatever, you just ignore those because they're not useful. But there's quite a lot of interesting comments about how to improve the series that you can, you know, what people want to see. And also, yeah. and I'll take the hit on this one. I <laughs> fought against the interview being mic'd up for ages because we did it right, right at the beginning and it felt like, because Minutes With is a really stripped back show where it feels like you can sort of see the set, it felt like the interviewer's voice came over. I don't, we had just hadn't done it properly in the edit, but it felt like it had been overlaid afterwards mm. and it sort of took you out of the moment and then there was just endless comments about mic the yeah. interviewer, mic the interviewer, and you... <laughs> There's me on like a monthly basis going, we should mic the interviewer. Yeah, uh, me going, no, it's, uh, I don't like it. And then we, we did it once, and the first comment was like, thank God you finally mic the interviewer, <laughs> which was probably written by... Um, <laughs> well, do, um, what about you, Erin? Do you read the comments? I do read the comments, yeah. Um, I mean, I find like social media comments fascinating on all platforms, but the YouTube it's a generous one, word. <laughs> fascinating, yeah. No, Eric yeah. is a very kind person. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, I do. Like Sundays, I kind of a uh, cup of tea, sit down, a bit hungover, and watch an episode of Minutes with. <laughs> um, That's what doing, yeah. And then we do have like a group chat where all of us kind of discuss the comments. Mm. Um, I just, well, I, I don't read all the comments on Facebook because there's, there's a lot. There's yeah. a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah. And like, there's obviously bad ones like there is anywhere, but I love the ones that kind of shut down the bad ones and mm. like, mm. you know, be like, oh, you need to ignore people like this. Like, this is amazing what you're doing. Like, in terms of the person telling the story, not you guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, saying like how amazing it is that they're telling, coming forward and telling their story. Like, uh, the positive ones like that, I think, are really great. Yeah. Craig the Sniper, who we talked about a lot, had thousands of yeah, DMs on, on Instagram after, the, after the, the video went live. But just the comments as well. So and he replied to all of them. He replied to every really? single person. Um, saying, and they used to say they were so supportive and so like Man, nice. kind to him. But Ben also loves all the comments which, which, which praises Lab Bible for me. <laughs> yeah, 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 I go in there and heart all of them. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if yeah. you want to get a heart, just, just, yeah. just, just, just say that you really like <laughs> nice this, this interviews we're doing and it really <laughs> stepped up the game. <laughs>
I was um, going to ask questions as well, yeah. actually, sorry. Um, yeah. In terms of the, Ben, you mentioned about comments being not just horrible, but like constructive and giving feedback. Mm. Has there been anything else where the comments have said something and you've been like, oh, that's actually a really good idea, we'll implement that? Or um, there's been titles, I think. There was episode like, titles, definitely, yeah. yeah. Yeah, like people put episode titles in that you go, that's a really brilliant idea. So the guy who uh, was in the Beirut uh, explosion, he actually was a big fan of the show and got in touch with us because he loved the show, was seen every episode, mm. and then came in and Faddy, that was his name, uh, and did an episode. That was, so that was nice in terms of like, that was the first one where someone was like, I have an amazing story, I really like the show, can I please come on and tell it? Mm. And it worked really well. He's a really good storyteller. Yeah, Very good storyteller. Yeah. Also one yeah. didn't get enough views, so yeah. what's yeah. that? <laughs> oh yeah! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I remember unlocking my phone and What's Up was on, and I kind of closed What's Up and clicked on the camera. And the second I clicked the film, I saw what, I guess, the whole world saw. How did you decide what it looked like, originally? Which portrayed, that's the, that's what we did in that phone call from my yeah. back garden, I suppose, we were just working through what the shots were. I was gonna ask, did it kind of grow out of lockdown because it was an yeah. easy uh, show to film because you've got one contributor, It came from like, two cameras. It came from the fact that we've been doing a few here. Me and Ben joined, to start the Lab Bible Originals team about a year before that. And we were doing a few shows, which we'd worked on with you, and there were like six episode runs. And then we were like over lockdown, and we were just like, we should just need to film something, get loads, as many as we can, and release it weekly, and really commit to a weekly release. Right. And we have committed to a weekly release now for two years, the last two years straight. So it was about volume, really. Yeah. People mostly wanted we film five in a day. Yeah, I remember at the beginning, especially, we did five back to back for four days in a row or something. Yeah, I was in a bad way after Absolutely that. Absolutely <laughs> exhausting, yeah. Well, I mean, we, still, I, we still do quite a lot in yeah, a day. Yeah, yeah, I was so. basically watching, I was behind the studio just watching from a monitor, and I was tired, guys. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, there was the one we did set on 18, I think it was across four, four, Maybe three days, four days. Yeah, that was, that was brutal. Uh, Luke, so how do you go about like finding people for the show? Obviously, you don't want to give away your secrets, but is it difficult to find people? I mean, some of them are pretty obscure. Um, I mean, what, which ones would you say are obscure? Well, I mean, what's uh, been the hardest one? Yeah, that's, yeah, let's. Um, <sighs> I'm trying to think of one Luke you've done. Yeah, uh, I know which one it is. Uh, I know the one you worked on for ages. Paramount. No, Bobby Cummings. Sure. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. He was, yeah, he was pretty tough. Frank was sitting in a motor. He was my driver, old Frank. He went, "What's going on?" I said, "Tomorrow." I said, "At seven o'clock in the morning, go and get Kennedy." That was my sawn-off shotgun. It was named after President Kennedy. I said, "And I want one chamber, one buckshot filled with rock salt, and the other one with the normal buckshot." In all right? Yeah, I'm not messing about with these people. They're dangerous. I'm going to shoot them. Yeah, I'd probably say Bobby, Bobby Cummings. Um, just, it, I mean, where, where do you start? <laughs> <laughs> uh, how do you find him? Um, but uh, no, it was, it was actually... Um, Why was he so hard to find? Was he had no phone or something? What was it? What was it about him that was so hard to find? Yeah. He's got a, a Spanish mobile number. Uh, how old is he? Is oh. he he's in his... He's in his 80s or something. 70s? I don't think, I don't think he uses like WhatsApp or anything like that. No. Does he use email? No. no. He lives no. in Spain, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, he's based out in Spain. Um, where do you start? Uh, but you we know we managed, we managed to get hold of him. Um, and um, It's a great app. Yeah, it was a well, great app. Well, to be fair, he's a big gangster. Uh, like the police had a hard time tracking him down. Luke managed to find him <laughs> uh, <laughs> somewhere in Spain, so yeah. I think, uh, wasn't Tim Peake another one like that, where it was like the planets yeah. just aligned at the last minute? Yeah, yeah, with, okay. with Tim Peake it was like we we tried getting in contact various ways. And in the end, it was just through Instagram. I just commented on one of his, uh, the, the latest post, um, slid in the DMs and <laughs> um, yeah, emailed, called the agency under, um, you know, messaged on uh, the Facebook page and then it was Instagram in the end. As Yuri was bringing the spacecraft in for the, the first manual approach, we were just aware that things were not going right. We had another failure, um, which meant the computer screen went down. So Tim and I were effectively blind. And that was the point I realized this approach is, is, is just not good. And Yuri, um, actually his hands started trembling on the controllers. We should say that Luke set up the Lab Bible casting page on Instagram mm. um, as another way of like getting people for all of our shows. Um, so if anyone does have an amazing story, and what to be on minutes with, they can message Luke on at Lad Bible Casting. I think that's what it's called. Quite yeah, incredible DMs. Yeah. 
Okay, guys, I think that's it for this episode. Um, as I said at the beginning, don't worry, we promise never to do this again. <laughs> and there will be a regular episode on Sunday at 4 p.m. UK time as normal. Uh, thanks so much for watching. It's you guys that make us able to continue this series. And on behalf of all of us, thanks very much. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do. That was, That'll nice do. <laughs> that was nice and natural, that's fine. I got onto the left hand wing clambering over that door lip, and then I stood onto the wing and was able to stand on the wing momentarily. I jumped, um, I would estimate, at a height of about 15, 15 feet.